Hello there and welcome back to another Hackintosh guide. Today I'm going to show you how to install macOS Big Sur on Proxmox. So let's get into it. So first we need the two ISO files. So we're going to need an open core ISO file and we are also going to need our Monterey ISO. So to download this you go to the link in the description below uh, and that will have all the download links and instructions if you prefer copying uh, and pasting and also uh, having you know a uh, written method uh, it will be below but as you can see right here I have the Monterey ISO and if I go to my main storage page I have the OpenCore V17 ISO so that's all we need for now. So, um, if I show you the um, actual uh, macOS collection of archive.org, I'll show you how you can download it. So, you'll see that um, first off, um, you will see loads of different applications for the Mac uh, so type that in is this one ISO collection and you can see that there's ISO images here so you can just click on the Monterey Beta for example and it'll start downloading or if you have a NAS or a torrent server you can use that so I personally uses a Synology NAS uh, um, to download which you can get an app called Download Station from the Package Center and I use that uh, to download my images but you can obviously uh, use whatever you like uh, you, there is also a torrent option if you like torrenting or you can just download it directly so the next step is actually creating our VM so let's actually do that so you'll see in Proxmox at the top right there's a create VM button we're gonna click that and then we're gonna give our machine a name so I'm gonna do Mac OS Monterey and I'll just put YT on the end so then I know if we click OS or next at the bottom the OS the actual disk image we're gonna select our open core ISO first this is very important so make sure you do that first then the guest OS type we're going to click other and then that's all you need to do if we click next on system we're going to change the machine type from the i440FX to the Q35 machine and the BIOS to OVMF UEFI also under EFI storage select your storage medium and untick pre and roll keys make sure that you've unticked it and then on disks this is where macOS is going to be installed so if you change this to vert IO block, which is very important, and then select your drive, I'm going to put it on an SSD and specify the size. It can be whatever you like. Then if we go on to the CPU, uh, we're going to at least want a quad core and set the type as host. Now, you can use Penryn, but I like using host. But if host does not work for you, try Penryn. For Ramble, we're going to want at least 4 gigs of RAM for Monterey, if not more. And we're going to turn off the firewall option and select the model to VMware VMXNet 3. Once we've done that, we're going to click Finish. And our virtual machine will be created. Right here. Next, we want to go to Hardware. And then add a new CD DVD drive. And then select your Monterey ISO click add and before we do anything else you want to make sure that the open core ISO is on IDE2 and the IDE0 drive is your Monterey um, actual installation image otherwise the next step in the UEFI shell will not work so we're going to click on options and then boot order and we're going to move that up to the top like so, copy the configuration there and then we're going to click OK 
Now we're going to go to our Proxmox node, right there, and then click Shell. Then, when we're in Shell, we're going to do nano cd, uh, nano forward slash etc forward slash qemu server. Which I cannot get. Hold on a moment. So we need to do etc pve qemu server and then the ID number, which is 107 for me. So you'll see 107 at the side. 107.conf. Now we're going to press enter and then we're going to change both of the CD DVD drives from media equals CD ROM to cache equals unsafe. So we're going to do that for both. like so and then we're going to get the arguments files um, which you will find on the website but because I've not created that yet I will go and grab them right now so there's two different ones is the Intel one and the AMD one I'm running Intel uh, specifically an Intel Xeon so I'm going to paste the Intel one right at the bottom so we're going to control VR right click and paste which I recommend and you'll see that it should all line up. Now I'm going to press Control X, Y, and then Enter, like so, and then we're saved. So then on the boot options, we're going to make sure that them two are the same. If they are, we're going to click on Console and then click Start. Then we're going to keep tapping Escape until we get into the BIOS. As you can see, we're in the BIOS. If we click, go down to Device Manager, then OVMF Platform Configuration, and then scroll down to 1920 by 1080. We're going to F10Y Escape, and then click Reset. This is because the Open Core resolution is set to 1080p, so this will make it easier. So we're going to click Enter then enter again and then we're going to do fs0 colon and then backslash system backslash library backslash core services backslash boot dot efi once you've done that we press enter and you will get an apple logo that displays so we're going to wait for it to boot up so as you can see the uh, install is successfully booted so we're going to head to disk utility click continue and we're going to click view there and then do show all devices then we're going to select obviously the Apple link Verti or block media and we're going to click erase and then name it so I'm going to do Mac OS click erase and we are going to click done as it is complete click X Go to the install macOS Monterey and click continue. And we should be greeted with the install screen. So it'll tell us what drive we want to use. Um, so also just to add, if you like my content, please give it a like so I know to make more. Um, the next video will probably be a macOS Ventura installation. Um, and also subscribe as well if you really like the content so we're going to click continue uh, it it can uh, sometimes load it's just because we're loading off an ISO media and mainly because it's coming off my Synology NAS as well uh, so it might not do that for you but we are going to wait so obviously we have to agree to the terms and conditions so click agree and then agree again and then we're going to click on our macOS volume and we're going to click continue. And there we go. It's going to give us a time that should go down in a moment. There we go. Um, so we're going to wait for that. So let's wait. Also, just to add, the um, actual VM will reboot, um, which I will uh, pick up on. Uh, but 
if you can't be bothered waiting for that just press enter on the mac os install it should select the default option which is great so i'll see you when it's finished in 22 minutes as you can see we're about halfway through and i can tell you something the time that that has took has not been 10 minutes so i'll see you when it's nearly done so you get this menu and then all you need to do is press enter then the installation will resume so you will see another installation bar see how it says 28 minutes remaining so you're gonna wait that so as you can see we're on the same screen now it will be quite a lot of times and um, I've averaged three to five times but as you can see we're already uh, beating quite uh, much quicker even though I am installing it on a hard drive uh, because I have more space but they are in a RAID 0 configuration for speed so um, sorry I'm actually installing it on an SSD so we're gonna wait for this to finally be if it keeps rebooting you just keep want to keep pressing enter until you get to the install screen so I'll meet you there as you can see we've rebooted again we're gonna just press enter once again as you can see we have rebooted again so we're just gonna press enter again we will do this about two to three times it depends on your hardware but yes uh, I will meet in the install screen then I'll tell you how many times it's rebooted so here we are in the Monterey first setup was it now you will notice that it's really laggy like look it's just frozen in place this will happen until you've gone through the initial setup phase so it may take some patience to get somewhere but you will have to really scroll down uh, and very slowly uh, select United Kingdom and click continue very slowly um, and walk through the setup process I won't bore you with like 10 minutes of footage uh, waiting for the mouse to respond so I'll meet you back when we're on the desktop and finally here we are on the macOS Monterey desktop so we're going to click continue and we're going to identify our keyboard and we're going to click done. As you can see we're on the Monterey desktop. Now we're going to actually need to move the A5 folder um, from our um, USB drive or the DVD ROM that we booted to install um, to the actual um, hard drive so we're going to obviously download clover configurator and open call which are in the description on my website um, I've already got them saved so um, yeah like I was saying I've already got this connected to a server hopefully we've got the IP address right, right. Um, so uh, as I was saying I need to check my server's IP address I might be able to just put the host name so let me do that um, but I already have them on my server so I can just drag them across but for you you'll have to download them using the links in the description uh, which is pretty simple but you want to uh, oops actually download them both so you need clover configurator and open call i use clover for the actual um mounting the efi but you can use the mount efi thing uh the command line if you want i just like these better so i'm going to copy these to my applications folder and we're going to get started on moving the efi folder So we're going to wait for it to copy, uh, it could be quite a while. Um, but basically, uh, we're going to first open Clover Configurator, and then we're going to open 
OpenCore configurator, which OpenCore is the actual bootloader that we're using right now. And I will show you how to change the product info or the SM BIOS as it's not. So we're going to open Clover Configurator first. Right click and open bypasses the security check, so make sure you do that. And we are going to wait for it to appear. And we're going to click mount EFI. Sorry about the resolution right now, I will change that uh, in a moment. We're going to click EFI and then the O, which is the partition on our install uh, drive. We're going to enter our password. Open up the partition that we've just mounted. Sometimes it will do that. You want to click mount partition again. Open. And you want to copy this and I just paste it on the desktop. But it really doesn't matter. Uh, where you paste it as long as you keep it obviously uh, on the computer you can transfer it later that's absolutely fine so once we've done that we're going to unmount the partition of the install disk and we're going to mount the actual mac os one on our desktop i'm going to right click and copy that efi folder i'm going to open up the new partition that should be blank if it isn't which is very unlikely you want to delete everything in that folder but we're going to click paste item now and that is it so we've uh, currently now just moved the AFI um, so now what I'm going to do is make the screen resolution bigger and we will set an SM BIOS profile so hold on so I've just changed the screen resolution and now I'm going to show you how to set a SM BIOS profile. So, we want to make sure first that our EFI partition is mounted. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's pretty easy. You just follow the steps that was in the last section of the video that I will have bookmarked uh, timestamps so you can go straight back to that part. But let me uh, do that off camera right now. So I now have the EFI folder mounted, so we're going to head to Finder and actually go to the EFI partition. We're going to double click, go to the Open Core folder and double click on the config.pls. Now, if it shows a little Clover Configurator logo, you want to open with and then Open Core Configurator because that's what we're going to be using. We're going to click Open there as well. And I'll show you how to do a simple platform info change. So, if you look at about this Mac, sorry I just did about Clover Configurator we need to do about this Mac you can see it says iMac Pro 2017 now I'm going to change that to Mac Pro 1.1 here so I've changed it to that you can change it to whatever one tip for you, you just go to file save by the way, is don't set, for example if you've got Mac Pro 1.1 which was, uh, sorry, you've got uh, Mac Pro 1.1 that was, sorry we don't want that, we want the uh, late 2019 one, the Mac Pro 7.1. If we have something set, that, uh, for example if we're running Catalina, and the new MacBook Pro released in 2020, uh, we set that as the uh, SM BIOS. We will uh, corrupt uh, OpenCore and you will have to redo your OpenCore installation. So just bear that in mind. I've done it and click save at the top. So now we're just gonna do a system reboot. So here we are back on the Monterey desktop. If we go to about this Mac now, you will see that it will say uh, it hasn't actually changed. Now this is because uh, it's not compatible uh, with the current version, but yours will change. So that's all I have for this video, thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching, goodbye.